Hello and welcome to the review for Kyo Ryuger. This is a show that I watched a while back and then just recently we watched as part of the King of the What Now podcast Discord uh, watch together. Uh, Kyo Ryuger is Juden Sentai. Kyo Ryuger uh, is a really, really fun show. Uh, if you have made it to this review and you don't know what Super Sentai is, I strongly suggest that you Google that and check Google Images uh, to see what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, but... Kyoryuji. Kyoryuji was my first Sentai. And I wanted to give it some time and then rewatch it. And thankfully, the King of the What Now podcast gave me the opportunity to do so. Uh, to rewatch it uh, before I talked about it. Because I didn't know much about Sentai back then. Uh, since then, I have seen multiple shows. Uh, and I very much enjoy Super Sentai. In some ways, more than Ryder, in some ways, less, right? Uh, Ultraman kind of. Coming up on both in some ways uh, for me. But Sentai, Sentai is just fun, right? That's what it is. It is just fun incarnate. And Kyo Ryuger is fun in a lot of ways that I didn't expect it to be. Uh, so this review will be in both parts, a my first experience and upon rewatch. Uh, but for a non-spoiler, you don't want to have anything spoiled for you. Uh, just quick, brief overview. Uh, Kyo Ryuger is a blast it has some unfortunate issues that i do think drag it down a little bit it is not my favorite sentai uh but it is absolutely still worth a watch in my opinion uh the music is incredible absolutely incredible uh the characters are really solid uh the villains are really good and the main mechs are pretty cool that's the brief no spoilers overview right from now on everything from here will be spoilers i just want to make sure that's clear uh because i will not be able to stop myself the way that I normally do this is I go character to character to character to character uh, and hit big points from those characters as we go. Uh, there's a lot of characters in Kyo Ryuju, but the main group, the main group of six, are all really strong. I think that the weakest of them is a shame because that character didn't need to be the weakest of them, characterization-wise, uh, but I do think that the main cast is all pretty strong. We'll start with Daigo, of course. Uh, Daigo... He is, he is a red that is excitable, that is uh, level-headed for the most part, unless he gets excited. Um, it's, it's tough to talk about Daigo without throwing out the word Mary Sue, right? Because in some ways he is. In some ways he is a Gary Sue. Uh, Daigo's, Daigo's weakness is that he has no weaknesses. Um, but at the same time, Daigo fails a lot. Uh, mostly because Daigo's kind of an idiot. Um, I like Daigo a lot. I don't like him as much as I like other reds. Uh, in fact, I think every other red from a series that I've seen so far, I like more than Daigo. But I still like Daigo a lot. Daigo's really solid. I think Daigo's biggest problem for me is, again, that he has no weaknesses. It's the fact, I mean, he does, right? But the show keeps telling you that he doesn't. Uh, Daigo, everybody loves him. No matter what, everybody loves Daigo. Uh, even the villains kind of start to respect Daigo. Not really because he does anything great to earn the respect, but just because he's Daigo. He's king, right? Um, everybody loves king. And that's great. I love king. It just it feels like maybe he should have had to earn it with a few people. You know, he earns it with the team. And I think that that's what counts. Uh, he's there for them. He helps them. He backs them up and eventually convinces them to come together to form a team, which is a really cool way to do it. A lot of Sentai nowadays has the entire team together right at the start. You know, uh, by the end of the first episode, the whole team's together. And technically that happens in Kyo Ryuji, but Daigo has to win them over. They won't untransform around each other because they want to they wanna keep their distance. And Daigo has to win them over, which is really cool. I think the dinosaur stuff is great with Torin and Daigo and their relationship and Gabutira and everything there. All of that's really, really cool. I think that they did a great job with that. I do think it gets a little weird in some of the movies, especially one movie where Gabutira talks and that that wasn't in the main series. Um, but I do still think that for the most part, they do a really good job with Daigo and Gabutira. Minitira is incredibly cute. Uh, I want a Minitira so bad. Uh, but yeah, it's they did a, gr a really good job with Daigo. I have another big issue with Daigo, but we'll talk about it at the end. Um, following Daigo, we have Ian, Ian Yorkland. 
Uh, Ian, I think, starts off as like the the stereotypical womanizer character, right? Uh, he's just in it for the ladies. Uh, but over the course of time, you learn that he's much more than that. Where other shows might have made him just that one note characterization, uh, by the end of Kyo Ryuju, uh, you know that he has a friend that has been killed uh, by Aigalon, uh, that that means a lot to him and that he wants revenge really badly. Uh, you learn that Ian doesn't flirt with women because he's a flirt. He flirts with them because he wants to make them smile because he recognizes they're hurting. Like, he doesn't just go after any woman, which the early episodes make it seem like he is, uh, but instead he goes after women that have pain so that he can make them smile, uh, which is better. I still think I would have rather maybe him not being a womanizer, but I think it's the best womanizer maybe in that regard i'm not a fan of that character type but at least this one tried to do something different with it i suppose um i really like ian and again since we're all spoilers just throwing that out there all spoilers uh the moment at the end where ian uses dinos grander i'm, I'm gonna get emotional i'm doing my best to stop it to open igalon's armor so that his soul can escape even though he hates him, even though he wants revenge against him more than anything else. Because he recognizes that Igalon's soul is trapped in that armor and he frees him anyway. Oh, oh, what a moment! What a moment! Oh, and we'll get into the Chevaliers because I think the Chevaliers are all great in this show. Uh, but yeah, Ian, Ian's great. Next up is No Son. No Son is just me in Sentai, so of course I love him. He tells stupid jokes, and uh, he's he's the oldest member of the team. He's 30, just like me. Uh, he tells stupid jokes, and he's great. He's a blue that uses wrestling moves and names them as he uses them. Uh, I really love his dynamic, his, his relationship with his sister and with his niece, uh, his relationship with his dead brother-in-law, and his relationship with Candelira is really interesting i like i like that a lot uh that goes some really good places so no son is top tier gotta 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 just give him the number one there's there's a pun in there but i won't explain it i won't you'll have to you'll have to find it um the green is soji Rupukan. and soji at first i think is kind of standoffish and kind of just you know hey i'm the i'm the edgy swordsman guy uh but over the course of the series he really does evolve he's the youngest of the group uh he grows into himself and into a, a strong member of the team he has a really cool relationship with his dad he has a really cool relationship with his mom he has a really cool relationship with torin and with everything that happens there uh it it comes together in a really cool way and when he's finally able to use the trinity straight sir uh i got super hyped he and Ian have this back and forth throughout the whole series where Ian uh, calls him a greenhorn or green boy or boy because Ian's obviously making fun of how he's the green ranger and he's the green horn. He's the youngest of them. Uh, but by the end of the show, they get a really cool moment where they're shoulder to shoulder and Ian calls him Soji. And you can see the change in Soji's face. And then uh, and they team up and it's really cool and it's really great. The pink is Ami, and she's the one that I think is unfortunately the weakest of the cast. She gets a lot of characterization early on. She's a really strong character early on. She gets to do a lot of really cool stuff early on. And even into the mid-game, uh, where she's she's helping out uh, Uchi, and she's helping out Soji, and she's even able to escape from that, that cell by using her feet, uh, which is a little weird, but also super cool, right? Like, she's getting to do things right up until the end when she's kind of not. And on I'll tell you, because this is first watch and rewatch, on my first watch, it looked to me like she suddenly stopped getting to do things because there was a love triangle with Daigo. Uh, that's not the case on a rewatch, having rewatched it and, and seen for myself. There's stuff with her and Daigo from the beginning, basically. That, that relationship does build really strongly. Uh, but I wish that just because she got in a relationship didn't mean that she had to stop doing cool stuff. Because at the end, everybody else gets to have a cool fight. But Daigo pushes her out of the, the Deboss castle 
so that she doesn't have to fight the boss with him. And I think it would have been way cooler if the two of them had fought him together. Uh, because everybody else is fighting for their life. Nobuhara's on the bridge fighting for his life. Uchi's in the forest fighting with Dogold, and we'll get to that because that's super sick. Ian and Soji are side by side. And then you just have Torin and the others are in hell fighting. And then you just have Ami getting pushed out of a ship. And it just was really unfortunate to me that it became a, well, no, I'm going to protect the woman I love instead of, hey, Daigo, the woman you love is actually really tough. You should let her fight with you, buddy. Um, it just, it felt really weird that this whole season had let her be cool and strong and then right up to the end went, nah. Um, so let's talk about Uchi. Uchi is my son. I love Uchisimi Maru so much. Uh, he is was my favorite extra or sixth ranger right uh, th uh there's another one that has taken that spot uh but so far all of them that i've seen are really strong uh uchi is great and i i feel bad for uchi because when he shows up in movies it's always to take an l he shows up in the movie to protect somebody and then loses and it happens every time and it makes me so sad because utsumi maru is great He's a great character. He's super kind, but he feels like he's got to hide it. He really cares about people and wants to protect people, but he feels like he can't talk about it too much because, you know, if he does, that he's got to be he's got to be a good samurai. He's got to he's got to project a strong barrier because the people that he cared about before got captured and used against him. And so now he's got to pretend he doesn't care, but he still super cares. Uchi is great, and we'll get into music specific tracks in a little bit, but Isayoi Gold Uchi's track is top tier. That is such a great song. Uchi Simimaru is a great character who I absolutely love and has maybe the best final arc in the show with the stuff with him and Dogold. It's so good. Uh, I do think the fact that his previous Lord and Daigo look exactly the same is kind of, that's a little too coincidental for me, but also it's Sentai. I'll let it go. Uh, you know, Sentai is a, a series where a salmon monster turns other foods into salmon for Christmas. So, you know, hey, I'll let it go. Um, yeah, no, it's they're they're great characters, all of them. I love them all so much. I think that the only thing I would have liked out of this main six, again, is Ami being able to do some more things at the end. Otherwise, I think this main six is a really, really strong team. Uh, especially towards the end where they've gotten over their quirks with each other. They've begun working together in even better ways. Soji and Uchi have been training with each other's sword techniques and can use each other's sword techniques. Uh, no son is able to launch people up. And so at one point he launches Ian up. So Ian's able to shoot from above and get a better angle. The, the way this team works together is really good. Uh, yeah. I could just go on, on and on about how good this, this core six is. But let's talk about the extra rangers. Uh, Ramirez. Kill you, Cyan. Ramirez is okay. Ramirez, he's, he's all right. Uh, he doesn't get to fight a lot. But the little bits of times where he does are pretty cool. He throws people around. He's a prehistoric dinosaur warrior. That's pretty cool. Uh, spirit ranger. Um, I like him. I think that there definitely could have been more done with his role. Uh, but I do like him well enough for sure. Uh, Tessai, Kyoryu Gray is pretty cool. Again, I think more could have been done with him. Uh, I get that they didn't want the extra rangers to show up all the time, uh, but it feels like they show up a grand total of like five times total throughout the entire series, uh, which is really weird. And the last time is just to hand their powers over to the next person. Uh, but I do think that they're pretty cool. Uh, Purple is way cooler i think than the others uh first off hyori violet suit looks incredible uh dr ulshade and yayoi uh both do a great job as violet and i think part of what makes it shine is that violet is around more violet shows up more not as much as violet probably could have uh but still does definitely show up more and plezuon is great so that already i mean ankidon and bunpaki are really cool too but plezuon is just great uh on 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 and then kyoryu silver Torin. kyoryu silver super cool again i feel like it has to be super uncomfortable for 
Torin when he transforms because of his wings. Uh, but Kyoryu Silver is super cool. From the way he transforms a completely different way from the others, by, like, having his Gabu revolver, his Gabu Giga revolver, and playing it like a guitar while tapping his foot as compared to the others doing the cool spin and everything. And, we'll, again, we'll get into music in a minute. I think it's really cool. Kyoryu Silver's great. And even when things happen and Kyoryu Silver passes on to the next character, we're in spoilers, to Don Tetsu, uh, Daigo's dad, uh, he's still pretty cool. I think that, yet again, probably could have been used a little bit more, uh, but I get why they didn't, and I do think it still winds up being pretty great. Um, let's talk about those characters themselves, though, not just the... Uh, Rami Rez, again, not much to say about him. He he shows up and then he's gone. You know, I like him, but he's not really there for enough of the plot to, to be a big thing. Um, Tessai is okay. Again, he's kind of just like, I'm hard-headed, and I'm here to help train you, and then I'm gone. I'm a spirit ranger. See you later. And that's kind of about it. I think the most characterization we get with Tessai is when he's interacting with Shinya, with his descendant. That episode's really good. Of Tessai being like, cut your hair! Uh, that episode's really solid, but that's really about all that we get with Tessai. Dr. Ulshade is great. He voices the Gabu Revolver and all of those incredible dinosaur names uh, I will never get over in my life. Gabu Tira! Uh, it's, it's incredible. It's great. Famula Uh Yayoi is okay. I think Yayoi would have been better if she hadn't been so tied to Daigo. She's incredibly thirsty. Um, I think it might have been better if she'd had a little bit more characterization of her own. But I do think the stuff with her and Plezuon is really good. Uh, she is able to to win over Plezuon and work with him and and be really cool there and help out her grandpa. Uh, Torin is incredible. I love Torin so much. Torin is a great mentor character. Torin willingly chooses to die and go to hell so that into Deboss hell so that he can go fight off the people down there and stop them from escaping. Uh, in what seems at first to be an eternal battle. And that's such a cool sacrifice for a mentor to make. Of like, hey, I'm not alone anymore. I finally have dinosaur warrior friends. I will pay the ultimate price to help you win and to protect you. And it's really cool. The way that he gives Feather Edge to Soji is still one of my favorite scenes in the show. Uh, it's so great. I, I love Torin. Uh, Don Tetsu, I don't love so much. I think Don Tetsu kind of falls into that same Gary Stu hole as Daigo. Of Don Tetsu can kind of do anything. If he punches hard enough, he can. I'm positive he can rewrite reality. Um, Don Tetsu is less of a character and more of a force. Uh, and where a, less of a character, more of a force is cool in Demon Slayer, not as cool as Don Tetsu. I find him infinitely less interesting as a character, uh, as the chosen king of the earth by the earth uh he's way less interesting to me i think his design is cool enough and the punch animation's really cool but that's about all that i have for don tetsu so we'll move on now into the chevaliers and then we'll talk about a little bit of the plot and then we will uh talk about the music because the music is probably the thing that i'm most excited to talk about and then we'll wrap up um the chevaliers okay Agalon. Agalon is incredible. The the weeping knight, the sad knight, the tin man, as it were, right? Uh, he's incredible. I love him so much. It's enough to bring me to tears. Uh, I absolutely love Agalon. He is maybe my favorite. Not my favorite, because Indolf is, but also he is, and so is Dogold, and so is Candelina. It, look, the Chevaliers are all great, okay? Um, I absolutely love Igalon, the Tin Man, the soul trapped in the suit of armor, the the warrior that should only care about sadness and yet finds joy in Candelira and wants to protect her no matter what. I love Igalon. Igalon's such a great character. And the journey that he takes throughout this series is incredible. Absolutely love Igalon. We might as well talk about Candelira next. Candelira is amazing, incredible. Uh, dun, 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 she's she's so good. Uh, keep smiling, yo. She's she's incredible. I love her so much. Um, she has a giant scythe axe, and she barely uses it to fight because she's all about joy. 
She's about happiness. Uh, and she really does care about Igelon. She also really does care about Nosan. Uh, but the moment where... I think the moment where it really hit me is the moment where Igelon is dying. And he can't die. He's dying. He's in constant pain, but he can't die. And Kendonira is like they're just calling out to him. And she's breaking. She's joy, but she's breaking. And then Ian frees him. And then she just cries after he dies. It's, oh, and I can hear the music right now. Oh, it's so good. It's such a good scene. It's a payoff for the entire series of these two characters. Oh, it's such a good scene. I'm not going to cry. I'm gonna hold it together. Um, Lucky Oro is maybe my least favorite of the five main Chevaliers, but I do still think Lucky Oro is pretty great. Lucky Oro is, is laughter, I believe, right? Uh, fun. Lucky Oro is fun. I'm sorry. And Lucky Oro really has no reason to work to hurt people. And slowly over the course of the series realizes that uh, Lakiro enjoys life way more. Enjoys reading manga, shoujo manga specifically. Uh, enjoys hanging out and making people smile and having a good time. Uh, playing pranks. And I think it's really interesting the fact that Debos wanted to absorb human emotion and got some really powerful people from the negative emotions but kind of lost his own people because of positive emotions. I think that's really interesting. Uh, and even, even Igalon, the positive side of sorrow, you know, which is really interesting. Um, let's talk about Dogold and Indolf because those two, oh man. Okay. So Dogold is anger, right? Fury, wrath. Uh, he makes a lot of bad decisions because of that. And I like that it's not, well, he's just stupid. It's no, he gets so angry that he makes the wrong choice. Uh, his relationship with Utsumimaru is incredible. And the moment at the end, where they come together to fight Indolf, and Dogold protects Uchi. First off, Dogold using Uchi's sword techniques because he had Uchi's body for so long. Then, oh my gosh, fighting side by side with him, protecting him with his body so that Uchi can keep fighting, shattering, reforming his armor not to take over Uchi, but to fight alongside Uchi and then taking the brunt of all of the attacks so that it kills him afterwards just so they can stop Indolf because he hates Indolf that much. It fit him to a T. I love Dogold. The, the arc that he takes is incredible. And since we're talking about Indolf, Indolf is the best. Indolf shows up and you have, Indolf is spite, right? Indolf is resentment. He's, he's the feeling of, I can't believe this, a uh, given form. And the way that, man, 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 man. Okay. The way that when Indolf shows up, the rest of the Chevaliers have been losing because they're using their, their emotions, right? They're trying to cause sorrow and cause fury, but there's something so much more powerful about trying to cause resentment. And Indolf shows up and just starts destroying the team. He just starts wrecking them. He attacks them while they're transforming because he wants them to hate him. He lets them hurt him badly so that he can resent them more to make himself more powerful. Indolf is this cold, calculated killer who is just constantly, oh, I have a headache now because everybody around him is so stupid. And I love him. He gets his just desserts, of course, but he's so good. Indolf is incredible. Um, I'm not so I'm not so sold on chaos. I think chaos is way less interesting uh, than most of the rest of the team. Uh, partly because he's kind of just the guy who summons Debos, right? Uh, Debos as a cool space butterfly creature is really cool, but he doesn't really have a character, so it's kind of just he's a he's a space monster, which in some ways makes him more horrifying. Because he's just a creature that eats. He doesn't even have his own character to come from, you know? But they're really cool enemies. I think they did a great job. We're almost 25 minutes in and we haven't even touched on the music yet. Um, Let's talk about the music. Uh, Okay. <clears throat> we didn't touch on the main plot either. <clears throat> main plot's pretty good. I think it's really solid. I think that uh, for the most part, 
it does everything you want it to do. Uh, there are definitely some weird deviations here and there, uh, but I think the way that the story ties music into the plot of the team is based on music in a way, you know? Uh, they're listening to the Song of the Earth. And the OP, Vamala Kyoryuji, is part of that. To the point where in character, the voice actors, like the, the actors themselves, are going, whoa, 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 whoa. And it just, it's so good the way it all pays off. The music in the show and the way that it's used is incredible. I'm so incredibly sad because this was my first Sentai and it was the last Sentai where individual characters got their own individual theme songs. But uh, this song, this song, this show has incredible music. Uh, almost all of the insert themes, I think, are incredible. Uh, Kamitsuki Brave, Ale Ale, uh, or Ole Ole, right? Kyoryuji, uh, Kyoryu Beat, Tatake Kyoryuji. Uh, these songs are all incredible. And the, the mecha themes? Look, okay. All right. I can't, I can't not do it. I tried to resist and I can't not do it. Giganto, 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 Giganto. For Bragigas? Oh, that song hits me right here. It's so good. It's so good. If you are watching this review and you have seen this show, you did the Gigantos with me. I know that you did. Because it's so good. It gets in your head. The character themes are all really good. Uh, Solid Bullet. Ian's theme, I have the list up so I can remember the names of the songs. Ian's theme, Solid Bullet, is incredible. Uh, Sinkono Brave, The Shining Brave for Silver, is really great. Uh, Slash, Zangeki Muso for Soji, is really, really good. And then Sanba, Kyoryu Sanba, the Mina de Carnival for the carnival theme, uh, is really, really good. Da 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 carnival! Da 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 da! The music in this show is absolutely incredible, and I don't know how many more times I can say that without just repeating it over and over again. Uh, the movies are okay. I think that the uh, the Gabarinchoa music movie could have been maybe more of a musical. It is a musical, but it could have been maybe more of a musical. Uh, but it's pretty good. Uh, and then Kyoryuji showing up in other movies. The Kyoryuji versus Gobusters movie, I will be the first to recognize it's not a good movie in a lot of ways. Uh, some of the plot points make no sense. But I love that movie. Part of that is because I love Abba Ranger. I promise I'm going to rewatch Abba Ranger soon, and then I will do a review on Abba Ranger. Um, but I will fully admit that I don't care how good something is when the Abba Rangers show up uh, because Abba Ranger is incredible, and I love that show. Um, <clears throat> with that said, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I didn't cover that I wanted to talk about. Uh, the dinosaurs are great, by the way. Again, I talked about how cool their names are. Um, Kabutira, Bunpaki, Ankidon, Parasagan, uh, Zaktor, uh, Teragordon, Bragigas, Plezuon, Trikera. They're all Sutegochi. They're all great. Uh, the Gabu Revolver is maybe my favorite Sentai transforming device. Uh, there's just something special about the way that it works that's really cool to me. Uh, Vamala Mucha! It's, it's so good. I love that thing. Uh, I had to buy one immediately, and I was able to get a really good deal on eBay that had the revolver and all the batteries. I have all the batteries now, too. But let me know your thoughts on Kia Ryuji in the comment section down below, because I could just ramble on forever. I really, really do love this show. I know that it's not perfect. I recognize that. Um, if Daigo had a little bit more characterization that wasn't just, you know, ah, well, he's great and kind of a, kind of an idiot sometimes. Uh, then I think he probably his story probably would have hit more harder, would have meant more to me. Uh, but the actor does a really good job uh, with what he's given. I think that Daigo is still a really fun character. Even if he is my least favorite Red, I think that he's really fun still. Uh, and I guess that just goes to show that I kind of like all the Reds. You know, maybe I'm weird. I, I don't mind them. Um, but that said, Ami needed a bigger role give her, at the end. Give her, give her her own fight, please. That would have made things so much better. Uh, I didn't talk about the, the regular Deboss enemies, uh, but almost all of them are great. Uh, 
Demo Yamasanta is incredible. And he's just one of so many. Uh, there are some great Devil's Monsters in here. Um, let me know your favorite in the comment section down below. And until next time, I've been Trey. This has been the Full Spectrum. Remember to always enjoy the Full Spectrum. The Kyo Ryuji has to offer.